Hello everyone, my name is Mario So, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about what lenses you should get for your Sony APS-C mirrorless cameras. Let's get started. So I hope you're doing well and it's great to see you back here again on the channel. A couple of months ago, I posted a video on which Sony camera you should get in 2021. That video had quite a number of you watching it. So I thought I would make a follow-up video talking about what lenses to get for your Sony mirrorless cameras. And in today's video, I'm going to be focusing on the APS-C or the crop sensor mirrorless cameras, such as the A6100, A6400, A6600, and those crop sensor cameras from Sony. So I'm going to try to make this video as compact and as easy to follow as possible. And I'm going to be talking to you about lenses that I found on my research or some lenses that I've shot with in the past that make it to this list. And if you want to find out a little bit more about a specific lens that you find from this guide, you can go ahead on YouTube and find a full detailed review on that particular lens to make sure that lens suits your needs. All the prices that I'll be mentioning for all these lenses in today's video are current to today. So if you're watching this later on, prices might have changed. And depending on where you purchase these lenses, you might be able to get slightly different variations in price. And stay watching up until the end of the video to find out which lenses I would personally get. So if you have an APS-C Sony mirrorless camera, you have to keep in mind that this crop sensor is going to give you a 1.5 times multiplication factor. This multiplication factor is important to help you understand the focal length you're going to get compared to a 35 millimeter full frame field of view. Also keep in mind that you can put full frame lenses on an APS-C camera, but you're not going to take full advantage of that full frame lens. All right, so let's get things started. We'll start with wide prime lenses. A prime lens is a lens with a fixed focal length. That means that you cannot zoom in with that lens. Well, unless you walk forward and backwards, that's how you zoom. So the first two lenses are the Sony pancake lenses. There's one at 16 millimeter and one at 20 millimeter. The 16 millimeter lens is equivalent to a 24 millimeter lens and the 20 millimeter is equivalent to a 30 millimeter field of view. Both of these have a maximum aperture of f2.8. So the major pro that you're going to see for these two lenses is that first it's really compact, really small in size, really easy to carry, hence the name pancake. The other thing is that they're very budget friendly. The 16 millimeter comes at $248 and the 20 millimeter comes at $348. The only two cons that I can see from these two lenses is that they're cheaply made, they're made from plastic and they're not weather sealed. The next one is the Sony 24 millimeter with a maximum aperture of f1.8. This one's equivalent to a 36 mil field of view. This lens is known for being very sharp corner to corner and it also has a direct manual focus. At 1.8, it's also a very fast lens and it's very good in low light. The cons that I see from this lens is that it is also not weather sealed and it's a little bit on the heavy side. The other con is that it's a little bit pricey, about $1,000. It's going to cost maybe even more than your APS-C camera. The next lens is the Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4. This one gives you an angle of view of 24 millimeters. What I like about this lens is that it's really sharp and it's really good in low light with that aperture of 1.4. The cons of this lens is that it's heavy and the autofocus is a little bit on the loud side. So if you wanted to do video with this, then that's something you wanna keep in mind. This lens comes at about $399. The next lens is the size two wheat. Two. This is the 12 millimeter size at f2.8, which is equivalent to an 18 millimeter in full frame terms. This lens is really, really sharp. It's premier high quality glass. A little bit on the pricey side, in my opinion, at almost $1,000, which would be the only con that I can attribute to this lens. The next one is a pretty new lens, the Rokinon 12 millimeter at f2. This one gives you a field of view, again, of 18 mil. This is the newer version, so it actually has autofocus compared to the previous version that was just manual focus. This is very good in low light as well at f2, and quite budget friendly, in my opinion, for a wider lens at $399. From what I've seen online, the only con would be just the build quality, but at this price point, it might be a great value for the money. So if you wanted something really wide, I would probably just stick either with the size or with the Rokinon if you're on a budget. But if you wanted something wide, but not too, too wide, you could probably get the Sigma 16 mil or one of the pancake lenses. If you had a higher budget, then you could probably get the Sony 24 mil. Now let's talk about portrait prime lenses. In this list that I compiled, I actually only came up with two lenses that I felt would be good to get. The first one is the Sony 35 mil F1.8. 
This one's an equivalent to a Nifty 50 at about 52.5 millimeter of a field of view. In terms of pros, it is fast and it's also sharp and it's stabilized, hence the OSS name and the lens. The only con is that it's a little bit expensive at about $423. The next lens is the Sigma 30mm at f1.4. This one has a focal length equivalent to a 45mm lens, which is close to 50, but not quite there yet. The pros of this lens is that it's fast and it's great value for the money. The only con is that it's not quite at that 50 mil of a portrait lens in my opinion and the autofocus is a little bit on the slower side. This lens is also not stabilized. This lens comes at about $279. So from this list, I will go for the Sony version because it stabilized. Now let's jump to the telephoto prime lens options. In the list that I compiled, there's only two lenses in this category that I would consider buying at the time of making of this video, of course. The first one is actually the Sony 50mm at f1.8. So you will think 50mm, why wasn't that in the portrait category, but instead in the telephoto? It's in the telephoto category because you have to remember that crop factor of 1.5. So a 50 mil is effectively 75 millimeter equivalent on a full frame sensor. A few great qualities of this lens is that it has amazing bokeh, it is light, and it is stabilized. It is also quite modestly priced, which is also a good thing. The only con that I could find is that it has no weather sealing. I think this is a very solid choice for a telephoto lens. The next one is the Sigma 56 mil at f1.4. This one's equivalent to an 84 mil focal length. This lens is fast, it's good in low light, it has beautiful bokeh, and it's quite sharp. It's also compact and lightweight, which is another good thing. The only negative thing again is that it's not weather sealed. And this lens comes at about 470 79 bucks. So for these two telephoto options, I would definitely just go for the Sony one. It's native to Sony and it's also cheaper than the Sigma option. So now let's jump to the zoom lenses available out there for Sony APS-C cameras. This is going to be a longer list. There are six lenses that are worth taking a look at based on what I found. These are going to be all around zoom lenses. The first lens is the Sony 16 to 55 f 2.8. And this is a G lens, which is going to give you that high quality brand and glass from Sony. The full frame equivalent length of this lens is 24 to 82.5 millimeters. If you have this budget, this is in my opinion, the best quality all around lens. It is very sharp throughout and it has excellent image quality. The only con is that it is not stabilized and it's actually quite pricey at about $1,200. The next one is a cheaper alternative to the Sony G lens that I just talked about. This one's the Tamron 17 to 70 f 2.8. This one's going to give you a little bit more of a reach with that 25.5 to 105 mil full frame equivalent. This is great in low light and it also has image stabilization, which the Sony G doesn't have. And it also comes at a fraction of the price. The only con is that it's only weather resistant, but not weather sealed. But it comes at about $799, which in my opinion, it's a very good buy. The next lens is the Sony 18 to 105 mil F4. This one will give you a full frame equivalent of 27 to 158 millimeters. This is a really great all around lens if you want it even more reach than the Tamron. Another pro of this lens is that it is stabilized. The only drawback is that it's not great in low light, it's not as fast at f4, and it's a bit of a heavy lens. The price is not bad as it comes at about $598. Now let's talk about wide zoom lenses. If you're looking for a wide zoom lens, there are two options. The first one is the Sony 10 to 18 at f4. This one's going to give you a full frame equivalent of 15 to 27 mil. This lens is very compact. It has great autofocus, a good build quality, and it's also stabilized. The con is that it is not as sharp as other lenses. It's not as great in low light at f4. And this comes at about $798. The next wide zoom lens is the Tamron 11 to 20 f2.8. And this one is going to give you a full frame equivalent of 17 to 30 mil. At the time of the making of this video, Tamron claims that this one is the world's first f2.8 maximum aperture on a wide zoom lens, which makes this a great lens if you want a wide zoom that is great in low light. Another great pro about this lens is that the focusing distance is actually really, really small. And this is good to close in on your subject if you want it macro like shots. The con is that it's a little pricey at about $829. So in terms of the wide zoom options, I would go for the Tamron 11 to 20. It's a newer lens and it has a very low aperture for a wide zoom lens for APS-C cameras. And the last lens on my list is the Sony 55 to 210 
f4.5 to 6.3 OSS. The full frame equivalent of this lens is an 82.5 to 315 mil. This is going to be your telephoto zoom lens. The positive thing of this lens is that for a telephoto zoom lens, it's actually very lightweight and it's actually quite cheap at about $348. In terms of cons though, the build quality isn't that great. It's not as sharp. It's not great in low light. As you zoom in on your lens, your maximum aperture is going to drop. And this is one thing that is not desirable on a zoom lens, but this is why this lens is also on the budget side. All right, so that is my entire list of APS-C lenses that you can buy. There's actually a lot more lenses that you could consider, a lot more third-party options, some manual lens options. I just wanted to focus on this video on lenses that had autofocus and on lenses that I would personally be inclined to purchase. So having gone through this list, which lens would I get? If I were to only pick one lens from this list, that would be the Tamron 17 to 70 f2.8. It actually gives you a very usable focal range all the way as wide as 25.5 and you get reach all the way up to about 105 millimeters. If you wanted just one lens to do all of your different type of shooting, this one would be a great option. And it also has a constant aperture of f2.8, meaning that regardless how far you zoom in on this lens, your maximum aperture is going to remain at f2.8. But if you are on a budget and you can only get one lens from this list, I would go for the Sony Pancake lens, the 16 millimeter one. This is equivalent to a 24 mil focal length and which is great in my opinion for your wide shots. You could even vlog with this lens. This lens is going to keep your setup very very small and tiny, very compact, which will be great for traveling. But if you most of the time you just do portraits and photography, then I would get the Sony 50 mil. At about 300 bucks is actually not too expensive and it's going to give you a very nice aperture of 1.8. So this is it for today's video. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite focal length is right now. I hope this video has equipped you with good information to know what lens you should get for your Sony APS-C camera. To make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, that would be greatly appreciated. And until next time.